So, Bunny. Yes. If you are a longtime listener of the Pope on Film podcast, then odds are I probably know you personally. So, hi. <laughs> Same goes here. Sorry I've been out of touch a bit. Yeah. Besides that, you also probably know that I am a lover of history. I am a regular historical orientist. That's a technical term. You probably haven't heard of it before because I'm, I'm just on another, a whole nother level. Yeah. But I am also a storyteller with my own unique style and voice. And so what I like to do is I like to just shave myself completely bald <laughs> from top to bottom and just rub myself in lotion. What I also like to do is I like to get a little-known story from the history books and rework it via my own unique razzmatazz. Yes. And that is where we are, kids. Yet another exciting installment of our long-running feature, Steve's Historical Approximations. And this week, we're trying to keep this episode of the show loosey-goosey. It's an easy, breezy, beautiful... Cover girl sort of episode of the Pope on Film podcast. And as such, this installment of Steve's historical approximations, or SHAP, yes. as I like to call it, this week it is in fact not SHAP. No. Because this week I am, I am handing over the duties to Steve's historical approximations to my wife, Natasha. She will be doing today's story, today's historical approximation. So it won't be Shap this week. Instead, it it will be Steve's wife, Steve's wife Natasha's historical approximations. So Swinatap. Swinatap. Okay. Swinatap, which I'm I'm not sure what that means. Swinatap. Yeah. But I like the I like I like the sound of it. I like the ring to it. So, <laughs> without further ado. Or maybe just a smidgen of a do. Yes. A midget of a do. <laughs> okay, without any further ado, here is my wife, Natasha. Yay! Okay. Hey. Hey. Sorry. No, no. Oh. Keep going. Yay! What? Yay! Wow. Yeah. what you got for us? Uh, well, I don't know how to start. How am I supposed to start this? Once upon a time. Once upon a time. Ask Maxwell. He's he's got openings down. He does. Does he? he does. Yeah. Hi, internet. It's me, Natasha. I'm here today to talk to you about history. How's that? Yay! Is that, good? <laughs> that sounds really good. You've already got us. Cool. Okay. So, once upon a time, back in the day before Americans took over. America. <gasps> Before iPhones? Yes. Wow. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to talk to you today about gender. Okay. As you all know, I, I'm a big fan of LGBT, and um, but this is broken. Is it okay to um, just say LGBT? I LGBT always feel... plus. Um, anyways, the thing is, is that gender and sexuality are immensely diverse yes so and and trans people are still fighting today just to be acknowledged that they exist i mean look at trump what what's been recently in the news with trump and his like absolute fucking hatred for them like dude you don't want to provide medical uh you know shit that the trans people and military need so that they can continue to stay transitioned or be, become transitioned. Yeah. So the, but, but, but how many millions of tax dollars have we spent just so you can go and fucking play golf at Mar-a-Lago? Uh-huh. a Lago? We're going to spend yeah. a lot less on our, our military trans folks than we are to let you go play golf because that's all you know how to fucking do. You yes. don't know how to run a goddamn country. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> And then today, they're, 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 he's trying to, to ban trans people from the military again. Again? again? Yeah, he already tried once, and now he's going to try again, even though 
I'm sorry, I don't know if you know how the presidency works, dude, but you can't just make laws through tweeting. Yeah. You know, that's not, it's like Michael Scott declaring bankruptcy. You can't just yell it and it is a thing that happens. I declare bankruptcy! Yeah, it doesn't work that way. I Um, divorce thee! Right? Exactly. (laughs) Break with thee, I break with thee, I break with thee, and then I throw a dog poopy on your shoe. So... Like, trans people have, have been around ever since people have been around. Yes. Like, forever. And there are several historical documentations of this. You'd have to search for it. I've not done all my research for this yet because I'm going to be writing a paper on it tomorrow. That is due next week? This week? This week sometime. Shh. I haven't started it. Don't tell anybody. Hear that, Internet? Don't tell anybody. The secret between me and you. Um, but I mean, just like just like sexuality, yeah, is a, that thing. It's it's been very fluid until it became a social taboo. Like the the, the what do they call? It became rigid at some point in time. No, but no. back in the day, it was like, a what very were they called? fluid the, the, sort of thing. Um, Sparta. What are they called? The Spartans. I'm sorry. Spartans. Yeah. Well, they were like the Romans. That you know, they. It was natural for them to have homosexual relations, that's how young boys learned to fuck and please well, their wife. They well, would in have fact... The old men. And that was fine. It was natural for them to do that, to learn that. And then they would go and be able to please their wives. They never saw an issue with that. Right. But, like, then the outbreak can of... We, can, the, we, can we pause the, there for just a moment? Huh? Can we pause there for just a moment? Sure. Because the Spartans are really fucking interesting. It, it, it was part of their warrior code. Okay? Because you will fight harder for the man next to you if you were in love with him. I mean, you're not wrong. You know? Yeah. And it's that's what I'm saying. Like it was natural. It was accepted. It Nobody was macho. It. it was <laughs> part of their their society. Yeah. That's why everybody in the army should go down on each other. Mm-hmm. It's science. But I mean, the only reason that uh, any type of homosexuality got banned was uh, because who was the who was the person that was running the kingdom at the time? Ended up catching like syphilis or something. Yeah. They, or herpes. It was herpes, I think. I, I don't know. I'd have to look at my book. But they got so they they automatically said, okay, well, it's because of all the homosexual activity. They didn't use those exact words, but you know they blamed that. So then it was banned. That's why. And so society began looking down on it because oh well we're going to get diseases and syphilis was like rampant. Yeah. So, you know, they cut that and they cut that out, but uh, we're not going to talk about sexuality. We're okay. going to talk about gender. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cause it's syphil us, not syphil you. Sniffleupagus. I thought it was, <laughs> I thought it was syphil and only. Sis. <laughs> anyway. So, um, transgender people have been around forever and, Usually before in Shakespeare America, companies. Before America became yep. America, uh, we had Native Americans here. What the hell they were called before then? What what did, what did they call their own country? That, that's something I need to look they, into. They were probably just called Hurricanes because they were here. Because they were here before yeah. us. Yeah. Anyways, so they were. There was a special word I can't remember because I can't find my book for some reason. But. They were called is when uh, men of the tribe would dress and take on the roles of females. Yeah. So they, their gender role would be females. This, there's a lot of this problematic with, you know, male and female roles. Obviously, we don't subscribe to male and female roles much anymore in society, but they did. Yeah. And because a man would take on the clothes, the duties, and, you know, everything that came with being a female gender, uh, they would be considered females. There was a special word for them. Um, they were revered in their tribes. Yeah. Because, holy shit, you're a dude. You were born a dude, but, you know, like, you're a woman. You're doing all this awesome shit. Yeah. And most of the young boys' first sexual experiences would be with those people. Uh-huh. And 
um, they would, even though homosexuality was like forbidden and looked down on, it was never once considered a homosexual act because they were considered females because they yeah. took on the female role in their tribes. So it didn't matter what they had between their legs. What mattered was their actions. What mattered what was in their head and their heart. They wanted to raise the children. They wanted to do the washing. They wanted to, you know, be the housekeepers, the wives. And they that's what they were. They were women. Yeah. And they were lifted up for that. And these boys would, you know, get their sexual experience from them and not be looked down on because, oh, you just slept with a dude. No, you didn't because you slept with a chick. Yeah. That's a one. That's so – it wasn't until, and, and it wasn't just Native Americans, there were other tribes uh, around the world that were similar to this too. But um, it wasn't until white man came out and, and shamed them. Yeah. And, and told them that this was wrong and made fun of them. And white people ruin everything again. Yeah. <laughs> fucking white people, man. Every time so you get a along, decent party going. They came along and they were like, okay, you're a dude. This is not what you're supposed to do. This is what you're supposed to do. Toxic masculinity. And I'm like, this is not socially acceptable. You have to conform to our ways because we're whites. And apparently we're, we believe that we're the superior race, even though we can't even consider how gender can be neutral. Yes. Like I can choose my own fucking gender if I want. No, I'm a white person. This is how it goes because this is what the monarchy told me it had to be over in Europe and just fuck all that. Yeah. So these Native Americans were being shamed and they were embarrassed. Uh, can I have like a little bite? Yeah, go ahead. They were being embarrassed and so eventually the tribe no longer revered these people. Oh. They shamed them. They hid them. They they hated them. So these people were felt the need, much like trans people today, to hide themselves. Yeah. To conform to society's gender norms. And so now, you know, and that that's lost that was lost to them. That's a part of their culture, a part of their own society that was lost to them because of white people. Yeah. Because white people fuck white people. Um but it's like transgender around forever. If I wanted to take on the role of a man, okay, like I said, problematic with the whole gender roles, but if I want to take on the role of a man, I could be considered a man, yeah. no matter what's between my legs or on my boob, you know, my boobs or not. And that's how it should be. Yeah. We don't, we shouldn't look at trans people and be like, oh, you're a dude, when they are, feel like they're a woman, <clears throat> when they dress like a woman, when they, you know, that's yeah. just, oh. I'm going to be <laughs> writing a whole story, an essay on this. Yeah, I probably should have done more research before this segment, but no, this is enough research for what we already do in this segment. Yeah. There's probably more research <laughs> what we do in this segment. But yeah, so that, that's a thing. Trans people are saying trans people are things <clears throat> gone back to See, the beginning of fucking people. I, I like how I, the story I, shows I, just how far back we've come. Yeah, you know, like like. Just we were we were more advanced in terms of acceptance. Well, okay, just like racism, it's a learned behavior. Yeah. Acceptance is a learned behavior. You're not taught to hate people who are different. I mean, you're not it's you're not born to hate people who are different than you. You're taught to hate people that are different from you. These tribes didn't know any better. They knew that okay, you it, it goes man and woman. Yeah. If you want to have a baby, but that doesn't necessarily mean that just because you're born with a penis, you can't take on a female gender. You can't play that part. Yeah, that's fine. You're no longer considered a man. Well, because you're considered you, a woman, you just can't have babies. You're not, you have a certain role in the tribe, though. Yeah, you know, they're not going to marry you off because you can't produce children, but you're still going to be able to do these things because that's what you want to do. Right, yeah. you know, but, you want to be a, a woman. You want to take care of the kids. Yeah, you want to go out and you know pick the berries or whatever the women's roles are. That's yeah. fine, and we're not going to shame you for that. We're gonna, we're actually going to lift you up because that's amazing. You're doing something that you normally wouldn't because you're a man, but you're still doing it. So that's incredible, and we're we love you for that. We love you for that. Yeah, but, but now it, it wouldn't be that in America, parts if, if we somebody didn't... wants to. 
What? It, it wouldn't be part playing parts if we didn't consider it playing parts. Exactly. That's just what, what you do. I, I I don't understand. Like like you know me personally, I have enough shit to worry about. Okay, I don't need to worry about what that person over there is doing. I I, yeah. I, I don't give a fuck if they put on makeup or anything like that. You know. We worry too much about other people's actions when they're not harming other people. Like, if you want to put on makeup and a dress and high yeah. heels and shave your legs and be called Stephanie instead of John, then why is that? A, why does that matter to me? That's not yeah. in any way affecting me, my family, or my personal beliefs. No. Yeah. Okay? So why does why do I have to speak out against that? Mm -hmm. You know, there's no reason for me to persecute you just because society has taught me that's not normal. The fuck is normal? A societal standard. Change it. Change your societal standard so that they are normal. Our normal should be whatever the fuck you want it to be, as long as it doesn't harm other people. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's not... It's so frustrating. (laughs) It really is so frustrating because I shouldn't have to speak out for these people and fight for these people right. because other people are trying to oppress them. But I do. I feel it's necessary for me to raise my voice and speak out. I feel it's necessary to start a nonprofit for young LGBT youth because they're being oppressed and they're told that they're wrong and they're told that they shouldn't have rights and they shouldn't be able to marry each other and they shouldn't have health care. They shouldn't be able to trans, you know, be trans and have their fucking medical that they need so that they can become a man or a woman that they feel like they are inside. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, (laughs) studies proof science says leans very heavily on, not says, but leans very heavily on the fact that trans people may actually be trans because of the fucked up hormone levels of the mother during the second half of the pregnancy. Really? Yes. If there is not enough of the proper hormones or if there's too much of the hormones, then that child is more likely to be trans. Really? And that's that's also, interesting. Yes. That's also why there are sexual identity disorders uh, or sexual, what is it? Sexual something like, okay, let's use a really old term that's fucked up and outdated. Um, like hermaphrodites. Yes. Because why when, is that outdated? The, the technical term that scientists and uh, people who with this condition now like to use is sex, uh, a sexual something. What did I just say? Disorder. Okay. Sexual. sexual associative? No, 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 not no. associative. Sexual something disorder. I can't remember. This is why I need my book. But um, the default programming of every egg is female. Every person, their default setting is female. The only way that they become male is if the father provides the Y chromosome. Sometimes the father doesn't have a Y chromosome. They have two X chromosomes, so you become a woman. Yeah. Sometimes they have two Ys and an X. So, you know, you're more a little bit more man than normal. You, the, sometimes you have, I mean, there's all kinds of combinations that could go wrong. Sometimes you can, you know, mom can only provide one X. And... There's just, so when you get the testosterone, Uh you have the primal gonads and they will either, there's two sets. Band name. The men, like the testicles and all that will either shrink or grow. The females will either shrink or grow depending on what your genes say to do. Yeah. Now, if the mom has too much testosterone when there is a female programmed baby, like you're growing, you're supposed to grow a female child. If there's yeah. too much testosterone in her system during the second half of her pregnancy, that child could be born with male genitals or test uh, instead of having ovaries, um, testicles. Uh-huh. There was a gold medal Olympian back in, uh, I think it was the sixties. She won 
I mean, she raced. She was a, a runner and she won. And it wasn't until her death that they found out half her chromosomes were male and half of them were female. She oh. had a um, penis that was, uh, what was it called? When you, she couldn't be used. Yeah. It was never, you know, it was a, what was the word? Vestigial? Yeah, it no. was, a, um, it didn't function. Uh-huh. And internal internal testicles. But she lived her life as a female. And it wasn't until she died that they found this out. So, like, things like this happen. It's it's not as frequent as, you know, people would like you to believe it is. But it does happen. Right. There's some that have ambiguous genitals that are half male, half female. Like, they have a descended testicle and an uh, enlarged clitoris. But on the other half, it looks more female, and it has one ovary on the inside, you know, and the Uh labia. That happens, too. And there's some that that they don't even realize they're raised as males because it looks like they have a penis. And it's not until puberty that they get the flood of estrogen in their body and their hormones and their cycles. So they start getting boobs and Uh hips and thighs and butts. And so, I mean, how how fucked up is that? There's a country where some boys they it's a chromosome disorder yeah. that they were born with, and so most of them were born with penises that were so small they look like clitorises. And there's a uh, what is the word they call them? There's three genders in their in their country in uh-huh. their little this little place: male, female, and uh, the word is. I can't remember the word, but it stands for uh, boy at 13. Oh, okay. They are pretty much gender ambiguous uh, when they're born, but it's not until puberty where they will, their, their clitoris will elongate and they basically grow a penis at puberty. Uh huh. A lot of them are cho- they chose to raise them as girls. Some of them they chose to raise as boys. Some of them they chose to raise, you know, gender neutral. And they are still able to go out and have, you know, sexual experiences because boys obviously have more freedom. And they're rejoiced when they hit puberty. And this happens. They're rejoiced because boys, obviously, women women are bullshit because boys are so much better. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Um, but they can go out and have those sexual experiences. The thing is, is their urethra is not on their penis. It's actually on their perineum. But they're still able to ejaculate. Huh. Oh. Like, yeah, uh, but see, they're they're still raised, regardless of the gender roles in their society. They still have more than two genders. Yeah. So it's not like, like America is so antiquated when it comes to gender specific specificity. Word. Because there's places all over the world where there's more than two genders would they recognize them? Yeah. And there's the even, there's even psychologists and scientists who argue that we should be acknowledging up to seven different genders. Really? I have to look, yeah. I, I have to go look up this, uh, his research paper because I want to read it. But yeah, there's, there's sites out there. We, we should be acknowledging seven different genders. What they are. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to read it to find out. Yeah. But it's oh, amazing. We, to- we're going to need an update on that. Yes. Cause I, I'm going to have to look it up. So that I, for my research paper anyway, but it's just, it's bullshit because we want to force people into these boxes and these, these conservative, usually white Republicans are like, yeah. no, fuck you. You can't be transgender. You're no longer my child. But then you're like, you know what, mom, if you weren't so fucked up in your hormones, I wouldn't be transgendered in the first place. Yeah. 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 And, 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 it, and, and what always kills me. Okay. And, and uh, frankly, yeah, okay. the, this is any repressed people or repressed society is that when Republicans have a sex scandal, it's usually some sick fucking shit, you know? Yeah. It's like Roy Moore fucking kids and and just horrible, you know? The best we've come up with is is Anthony Weiner, you know? I know. Not that. The thing is, like, the whole protesting too much thing. Yeah. There's... That's reality. Like there's truth based in that. Uh, it, it there's a what is a psychological term for it? You're uh, misattributing other people. Uh-huh. Like you attack, you attack others for fear of your own 
feelings and yeah. desires because you've been taught they were wrong. I mean, most of the time they are like you know, Roy Moore. Um, but you know, you, you, you misattribute other people. So you attack that group because of your own deep seated fears and desires and fucked up, you know, sexual prowess to, towards children and yeah. animals. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, but that's a thing. And Republicans, that's why it's like, okay, just uh, who was it? Emerald, Emerald had said, yeah, sure. Republicans are against abortion until they knock up their mistress. Yeah, yeah. that's been proven. I mean, you want to save the babies, sure, till you knock up somebody who's not your wife, and then yeah. you're all about killing that baby. Yeah. But also, don't get rid of my guns because we can't allow my freedom to carry a firearm to be taken away, even though that firearm is killing children. Yeah. Uh huh. It's just, I, yeah. I don't understand. This isn't about politics, though. I'm not going to get into politics and guns. But again, but again, now I have not looked at the particular studies, but from what I've heard, you know, so preface it that way, um, they're against abortions, but they get abortions at a higher rate. They're against divorce. They get divorced at a higher rate. There are there are more right wing people in jail than more liberal people. Well, uh, I don't know about that particular fact because I haven't looked it up. Yeah. But uh, I am taking my social problems class, and yeah. there's, I know that there's a higher number of blacks and Latinos. In, uh, Hispanics in in prisons and jails, yeah, for misdemeanor crimes mm -hmm. than there are white people. And statistically, Mexicans and blacks are more liberal than white people. So, I don't just mm -hmm. from that I would infer that there okay. are more liberal in jail, but they're in jail for lesser crimes. The higher crimes like murder. Uh, embezzling shit like yeah. that is done by right wing white people. Yeah. So like, if you look at the different severity of the crime, then that's where you'll see the difference in political views. I think. Yeah. yeah. Like white, white Republicans are more prone to commit worse crimes than liberals. Yeah. Any, yeah. any liberal. And they, then they get to go to the nice prisons. Yeah. They, and then they only, you know, have to stay in jail for six months after raping somebody behind a dumpster. Oh, yeah. fucking God. Yeah. Uh-huh. Can, 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 I, can I stray for a second? Sure. No, yeah. I'm uh, done. That's all I've got. That's all you've got. Well, I've got one thing for you. You, you said um, acceptance is a learned behavior. Yeah. Okay. You put that on a shirt. Put a few birds on it and a rainbow. Twenty nine ninety five. No, we can no, make not so much acceptance money. necessarily because we will easily accept people. It's hate. It's yeah. segregation. It's yeah. it's fear. Yeah. That we teach our young. Uh, we were talking in class. Get out of my purse. We were talking in class about gender and sexuality and stuff. And how that would affect children in a home. Because there are traditional roles. There are, you know, mother-father roles. There are, I mean, we didn't even touch on mult multiple parental units in the home. You know, in today's world, you have mother-father, stepmother, stepfather. You have all kinds of stuff. I mean, that's not even touching on the societies who have more than one mother, more than one father in the home, in a relationship, like in a polyamorous relationship. Yeah. Stop. Stop it. Put it down. But she was talking about counseling children, you know, to how does that affect them? How would, you know, two, you, you're raised with a mother and a father, and then you see two mothers or two fathers. How does that affect the child? And I told her, I said, you know what? It doesn't. It doesn't because they're children. Yeah. They are taught to not accept those things. My, I told her, so my father spent 40 years with my mother because he was told growing up in the 50s that this is your role as a man. You are to get, you know, go to church, 
get married, have 2.5 kids. You know, this is the life that you're supposed to lead as a white Christian male, you know, and for 40 years he did that. And it wasn't until after my mom's death that he finally felt comfortable to be who he really is, was, who yeah. he really is and be with a man. And you know what? My six year old son, he had no problem accepting that. No he problem spent at all. His entire life with my mother and my father around. That was his Nana and his Papa. Yeah. My mom died and now it it's Papa and his boyfriend. And when we explained that to him, I said, that's Papa and that's his boyfriend. And he said, Oh, like his friend. I said, no, his boyfriend, like they're in love. They're, they're in a relationship like mommy and daddy. And he said, Oh, okay. Uh, that was it. And that was it. And it was completely accepted. He needed no further explanation. He didn't question it. He didn't say, well, isn't that wrong? How is, you know, is Papa going to go to hell? Yeah. He didn't say anything. Like that. He accepted it. You know why? Because we have never taught our children to hate other people because of how they are or mm -hmm. who they are. It is a hatred for things other than your normal is a learned behavior. Yeah. You teach kids to hate. You teach kids to be homophobic, to be Islamophobic, to be all, I mean, just transphobic. Uh -huh. You teach kids these behaviors. They don't learn them on their own. They have to have somebody teaching them that. And like, nobody, I don't, it's just like, why would you even pose that question as a therapist? You yeah. should know better because kids learn these things from their parents. They learn these things from other people. They learn them from the kids that they're around. Well, and any any question should be asked, and any question okay. should be studied, and not always because that particular thing is worth studying, because other things wind up getting revealed. You know, like like I, I don't I don't mind that scientists are trying to figure out whether or not we're living in a simulation. I, I I think that's a bit of bullshit, but let's see what they let them explore. Let's see what they find well, out. They may still come back with useful shit. You know, that's true. Maybe I, I should have phrased that differently, but like the way that she phrased the question in class made me feel like my own perception of it was that she felt that there were repercussions for a child seeing a same sex relationship. Yeah. And there are, it's called acceptance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's called not hating that's people it. who are different. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's what, it, that's the outcome. And you want to study that. That's fine. Go ahead and study it. But you'll, you'll find that those are learned behaviors to hate, to mm -hmm. question it. To, and you want children are going to, they're naturally curious and they'll ask that they see a mom and a dad together. And then they see a dad and a dad. Yeah, they're going to ask questions, but it's a matter of how you answer those yeah. questions, how you approach it, and how you teach your children to approach it. Mm -hmm. My kids, they've never been taught that it's wrong. They're never going to question love, you know? Well, that's that's why, I, me personally, I really kind of feel that a lot of things that are done in the name of God with kids is really kind of child abuse i agree um they the ch kids most people that are raised in religion i feel it's a form of abuse because they are not allowed to think for themselves yeah they're taking old out of date written how many years ago scripture and it's being shoved down their throat. They're being brainwashed with it. They're being told this is how it is. This is how you're supposed to talk, you know, talk, live your life. And you can't stray from this. You can't think for yourself. You can't be an individual person. You're part of the collective. Mm -hmm. So how are they supposed to break free from that and think for themselves and learn for themselves when you're shoving the shit down their throats? Yeah. And, them. My kids have always been allowed to choose for themselves. Like, you want to be in church? That's fine. I'll bring you to church. If you don't want to go to church? Fine. I won't take you to church. It's mm -hmm. that's it's plain and simple. Just like that. They have the freedom to make their own choices. Yeah. And you know? and and 
God, these, you know, I, the brainwashing is so strong that they twist themselves into fucking pretzels trying to make the Bible sound re reasonable. I mean, anything. No, there was no fucking flood. Get over it. Yeah, but you know, anything can be argued to sound reasonable if given enough time, the right person, and the right circumstances. Anything. Explain, Lucy. Did you explain it? Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I, 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 I did not follow your drift. Okay. I can probably tell you how gay dinosaurs were actually a thing. Okay. If I had enough time, the right situation, and hell, the charisma has a lot to do with it too. I could probably make you believe the sky is actually purple. It really, it's, it's all situational. Everything, anything can be argued to sound reasonable at some point. I'm not saying with every person. But yeah, enough. but you should be able to I, hear the bullshit. I could convince enough people the sky is purple yeah. to follow me and have a small fucking cult if I want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I can't understand how, like Stephen and I were talking the other day, I can't understand how flat earthers are a thing. Or creationists. But, but what cracks me up, what cracks me up is that the creationists do not like the flat earthers and vice versa. Okay? Especially since when you come down to it, a flat earth is, is, is more biblically supported. Well, I mean, it just... It doesn't make sense to me either. <laughs> Just like Christian scientists. That's like, that's an oxymoron to me yes. personally. Yes. I don't understand how you can be a Christian scientist. You cannot, I can't. And this is why, God, I've, I've tried, buddy. I have tried so many times to get into religion. I you cannot, have. I cannot. Yeah. Marry those ideas. Yeah. I can't say, dude. Yeah, I yeah. I, that's that's me, dude. I question, yeah. I question everything, and I expect to find logical answers. Yeah. So when the Bible is telling me that some being I'm supposed to believe in and have faith exists, it created Earth uh -huh. and everything on it. I'm just, a, I just can't do that. My brain cannot accept that. Mm -hmm. So how can any person be a Christian scientist? Yes. <laughs> it's hard for me to, but there's people out there that are. Uh -huh. And I don't, it's like, I really want to talk to them and be like, can you please tell me how you can be a Christian scientist and marry those two ideas of Christianity and science? Yeah. I, it's an oxymoron, bunny. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. I, 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 our family was our family was Lutheran officially. And and we dabbled in church. Yeah. We didn't really do church. When I got older, I was pseudo Catholic because there was a Catholic church nearby. Um then a bit older in my later teen years, I, I was more a, a speaking in tongues, throwing yourself backwards kind. I never, I never threw myself backwards and I, I don't believe in tongues, you know? Yeah. They're making up shit and I, I, I was eventually pressured into making up shit. Yeah. You yeah. know? I mean, and, and speaking of uh, Catholics, the the concept of original sin. Yeah. We we covered that in in my human sexuality class too. Original sin is is it was brought on by some fucking dickwad who was just so prudish, and sex is a sin even for 
procreation. Like literally, yes, sex is yes. the only way that we can procreate, but it's a sin. And that is why original sin exists because you are born from sin. Like there's oh, no other way Lord. to have kids yeah. except to get a sperm and an egg together, which back in those times, it was like the Victorian times. It was all fucked up. They were sexually backwards. Oh yeah. So backwards. But um, see, th- but see, that's where you get the Marquis de Sade though. You know, yeah. whenever a society is really repressed or, or, or just batshit craziness like Japan, a very repressed society, Japan still is. And, and, Everything coming out of Japan is just batshit fucking crazy. God bless their hearts. And really, it, it was the repression which was kind of ending in England that gave us Monty Python and shit like that. I mean, from repression, you get so much. Yeah. Eventually. Uh, eventually. Not, not necessarily right away. And you learn. But like, the Victorian times were all kinds of fucked up masturbation wasn't allowed and that's you know that's the invention of like pretty sure that's the invention of a uh, cock and ball torture right there <laughs> I'm kidding. no like i'm no fucking joke bunny there's yeah. some of the pictures in my book i'm like hey i think i've used one of those as a dominatrix like if you're into that thing <laughs> yeah you know but seriously some of that shit the chastity belts uh, for women aren't are nothing compared to the fucking shit that they would put a put on a man's dick yeah. Like these cages that they would put on guys to keep them from touching themselves and to keep them from having sex so that they could be pure. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I, that's, that's, that's why I appreciated the old days of the cod piece. The uh, cod piece. Right? <laughs> oh, so many people think seem to think that the cod piece was a piece of armor. No. <laughs> It was it was stuffing the front of your jeans with socks. Yeah. Basically. It was to get a really big bulge. And have you seen some of those pictures, the drawings from that, that period? Yeah. I mean, Man, I've seen I, mean I mean some of them some of them are just, just just a big horn coming out of their crotch. Like what are you trying to say there? <laughs> Kid. Of of course, sooner or later the the Catholics broke up that party. <laughs> Eleanor, okay, well, okay, I'm done. Baby's got to. I've got to get this baby out of here. She's being crazy. Okay. So there, there's my historical approximations. I know we kind of went off the topic a little bit. But... Oh no, that was great. No, that, that was, was fun. Yeah, that is it for Steve's historical approximations, or in this case. Steve's wife Natasha's historical approximation. So that's that was Suwanat Hap this week. And I hope you all enjoyed getting your learn on next week. I'm very excited about this. Uh I just dropped my phone, but that's not what I'm excited about. Next week we will be discussing the history of Barbie dolls and the strange story of gay Ken. <laughs> I just recently learned about this, and it's incredible. So that is next week. So be sure and join us next week for another Steve's Historical Approximations. <laughs>